<laughs> All right. Good evening, church. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is Colin, the pulpit minister here at Central Church of Christ. And this is Dan Spaith. He's one of our elders. And here at Central Church of Christ, it's our mission to be God's heart and hands in this community and beyond. If you'd like to learn more about what that means, I want to encourage you to head over to our website at www.churchvictoria.com. This is our Wednesday evening conversation through the law and the prophets where we open up the Old Testament. We move through the narrative and the text, and we see how it impacts us today as the church and how it how that text connects to Jesus. Um, if you're listening to this on the Heart and Hands podcast, I want to thank you so much for joining us. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you have the bell turned on so you get notified every time we upload a video. And if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure to like and share. That really helps us out. And make sure to comment down below. Um, if this ministry has blessed you or you'd like to partner with us in this ministry, I want, I want to encourage you to head over to that website. At the top of the page, we have a donate button that uh, take, will take you to PayPal, and you can partner with us as we seek to teach and preach the gospel. Uh, we're going to pray and get into the lesson. Again, church, thank you so much for joining us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity we have to study today. I pray, Father, that Cole and I will remember that that uh, we have people watching maybe that don't uh, understand a lot of this and help us to keep it simple, help us to keep it focused on a, on a particular point and help us, Father, to, uh, uh, to allow you to work with us and through us as we teach this text. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for loving us. And thank you for Jesus. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So we've been dealing with, uh, we're in Deuteronomy chapter two. Make sure my uh, stuff's on silent. We're on Deuteronomy. We're in Deuteronomy chapter two. And, uh, you know, we kind of dealt with a, a pretty tough topic in the last class, which is, you know, God's judgment mm -hmm. and his working out of the nations to draw all people back to him through Christ eventually, you know, and, and that that's well, what he's doing. You know, he's got a plan. Right. God's got a plan. Yep. Just because you don't know what the plan is, don't yep. mean you don't got a plan. So, and, and that's great. I love that you bring that up. So let's talk, uh, real brief, let's talk about a very uh, powerful word that people misuse and misunderstand all the time, which is predestination. Mm -hmm. God has got, predestination just means that God has, in the, uh, in the time before time, God had a destination in mind. Right. Mm -hmm. And that destination was salvation mm -hmm. for the church. Mm -hmm. This is what he wants to do. He wants to bring into this. He knows that man is going to fall and he's going to have to redeem his creation in order to bring about the order in the universe that he wants to bring. So he before time ever began using what he knew was going to occur. He pre chose a destination. That's mm -hmm. predestination. Right. Mm -hmm. Another word that we use. We use a lot is providence. Providence is just is merely the outworking, God outworking his plan to get to where he's trying to go. So think about it like I want to get to New York. How am I going to get to New York? Well, there's a lot of different roads I could take. I could get on an airplane. There's a lot of different ways I could do this, right? But I have the destination in mind and me working out to that destination, whether I take a boat or a plane or a train or a car, right? That working out, that's what we're witnessing. Mm -hmm. And so when we see this stuff in the text, I think one of the most important things that people can do as they move, especially through the law, because there are a lot of difficult things in the law, mm -hmm. understand that ultimately what God is doing is he is working to bring about Christ and to bring about redemption. You know, we see a lot of judgment and atheists love to eat our lunch on judgment because the judgment of God is terrible. And guys, I, wanna, I, want, I want you to grab onto this. The judgment of God we're is a horrible thing here. to behold. Yeah, we're going to deal with it here. Yeah, we're going to look here. at some of his judgment here. Mm -hmm. So it's a horrible thing to behold. It's not something we have to be scared of in the sense that I'm worried the judgment's going to fall on me because as Christians, we know that there is now no condemnation in Christ, right? And as long as we are continuing to pursue loyalty to Christ, we know that there is that, well, that I think, condemnation. I think that, free. you know, we, we know that. Let, let, you know, if if I'm following Christ, if, if if I'm a disciple, and that means that I've denied myself, picked up my cross, and I'm following him, if I'm doing that, then God says that Jesus has paid the price. That's right. I've been washed by the blood when That's I right. was obedient to him. Mm -hmm. And now I'm walking in, in union with Christ. And that means now there's no condemnation. That means I wasn't found innocent. I was found not guilty. I was not found innocent, not not guilty, innocent. Yeah, means I didn't do it. Yeah. I mean, I didn't do it according to God looking at me through the blood of his son. So when you look at the, at the way he set this up and, he, and all these things that are happening, all those things happen to get that in place, to bring it. That's what Galatians chapter three tells us, that the law was just a school teacher to bring us to Jesus. 
So everything in the Old Testament was there just to bring us to Jesus, to set that framework up. You know, and, and all the things that happened to these people were were stepping stones getting to that point. That's all they were. Yeah. And we look at them and say, oh, my gosh, judgment is terrible. Well, you know, here he's going to talk about 600,000 people, kid, people died. Yeah. You know, 600,000 people over the age of 20 died yeah. because they wouldn't do what he told them. Yeah. It wasn't. They they had a choice, and and he's about to and, use this very nation. And you've got a choice too. That's you know, right. God's God's been very specific. This is what I told you to do. You know, Jesus said in Matthew chapter seven, I believe, he said they're going to come. People are going to come to me on that day and say, Lord, didn't I do all these wonderful things? Oh man, God cast out demons, did all kinds of stuff. And Jesus is going to say, He's going to look up and say, Man, I don't know you. Get away yeah. from me. Before they before they say, Look at all the wonderful things they're going to do. They're going to acknowledge him as Lord. Yeah, Lord, Lord. Yeah, didn't I do all these wonderful? So this is this is somebody. You know, we we talk about faith versus works a lot. In that in that statement that Jesus makes, he proves very succinctly that it's not about what you believe. And it's not about how well you can perform tasks. No. He totally repudiates the whole system and says, ultimately, what is this? What does it boil down to? Whether you're loyal to me. Yeah. Whether you've embodied that loyalty, whether you've, as you pointed out right at the beginning, and I love that, pick up your cross and follow me. That's real loyalty right That's there. Loyalty. That's loyalty. And that and that means self-sacrifice, right. self-control, what Scott talked about last and night. He did a great job. He did a great job. Great job. You, you know, talking about self-control. Yeah. You know, and, and that's all involved. You learn how to do those things as you walk with him in, in, a, in a loyal place with him. That's right. You know, you can't do, guys, you can't do that playing church. <laughs> no. Playing church doesn't get that, that not loyalty doesn't happen when you play no. church. You have to make a decision. I'm going to do this. I'm going to I'm going to quit this job and take another job, or I'm going to quit these friends and take other friends, or I'm going to take, quit this church and go to another church. You know, I don't understand people going to a church that their preachers and their teachers won't teach the book. Uh, I don't understand that. Yeah, no. I, you know, I'm, I just heard I just heard today. You know that you know. I mean, I wish our preacher did well. Then find a preacher that will. Yeah. Find a place that does teach these things. That's right. You know, I mean, it's simple. You know, I mean, it, it, if your spirituality and your and your and your your eternal life depend on it, well, well and, and let's be clear: the Word of God, Paul to Timothy, Timothy being a, a young preacher, kind mm -hmm, of the guy who's mm -hmm. going to step up and take over Paul's role, right? Paul looks at Timothy and says, "Preach the whole counsel of God." Yeah, that's what he says. He, you got to. This is what you're expected to do: is preach and teach on the Word of God. So this is, guys, this isn't like an option. This is a command. But it, if he, you have a pastor or a preacher yeah. or an elder who is teaching something that is not the Word of God, they're not teaching out of the book. They're not teaching the very words of God. Then they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Like it's just that simple. Yeah. You know, and, and and you know, I mean, when when you look at that, and uh, now I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Keep keep going. So I'll get it back. Yeah, it's 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 pretty simple. This is you know, the churches don't have the authority to teach whatever they want. We weren't given the authority by God to say like, oh, I'm going to teach pop psychology, or I'm going to teach my opinions, or I'm going to teach this. You know, this is why I'm really careful. I try my best to be like, hey, look, this is for this. There are opinions that we can have about the text. And I try to always be really clear when it's like, you know, I'm not really sure. This is kind of where I'm at on this right now. But those are all usually smaller issues. You know, like, um, well, big issues for some people, smaller when issues When somebody for some that you're talking to doesn't know details of the story that that God has has trained us with yeah. given us as, as examples for us then you don't walk you run away yeah that's a good point yeah absolutely yeah i mean this is not you walking's out of the question mm -hmm. running is yeah. the answer away from someone who's not going to teach you or who doesn't know you know, I, I, you've told me before that there are people out there, there are churches out there where the preachers don't have a clue what the Old Testament says. Mm. I said, are you kidding me? How could that be? When it's when it was written to give us an example. Well, That's what it says in Romans 15. And you guys can you guys can easily see this for yourself. Look up any type of graduate master's of divinity graduate program and look at how many textual pro pro classes, literal classes over the actual book those programs have. And the answer is very little. Very little. They'll usually have, a, I'll give you an example. There's one real prestigious university that's real popular in the evangelical world, and they have a Master's of Divinity of Biblical Studies. So it sounds like what they're really studying is this. They have four textual classes, and they're all survey classes. 
introduction to, or not introduction, really? but New Testament Survey 1, New Testament Survey 2, Old Testament Survey 1, Old Testament Survey 2. So they have four classes. You know what a survey class is. Yeah, so survey means like just like an overview. It's an overview. So it, no, no detail, just right. overview. So it's an overview of all of the books of the New Testament, and it's an overview of all of the books, two overviews of the books of the New Testament, and two overviews of all the books of the Old Testament. And then they take three systematic theology courses, which isn't studying what the book says, it's studying what somebody else has said about the book. So you're studying what somebody says the book says. And so you're not really studying the Word of God. Um, so in other words, they've got each one of those classes is three hours, right? So that's seven courses, that's 21 hours. So in a 120 hour biblical studies degree, only 21 hours are focused kind of on what the book actually says. Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. And so, look, and this isn't rare. You can get on online, you yourself, and look at any any course of study in a Master's Divinity program. There are some that are better than others. Granted, I'm not saying they're all nonsense, but you can look and see. If you've got a pastor you're you're working with or you, you attend a church, you can ask him where he went to school. Hey, where'd you go to school? Where'd you get your education from? And you can go look at what his education actually is, and you can find out exactly how much of the book this man has, has possibly you know, studied. I've been, I've been reading this book a long time. I can listen to somebody for about 15 minutes to know if he knows anything he's talking about or not. You know, it doesn't have a clue. Well, and this is a big problem because, and this isn't a problem. I want to be very, very clear. This isn't a problem that I'm I'm looking at and saying, oh, this is a problem. This is a problem that men, godly men, who have taught in that system, who have taught in Masters of Divinity programs, have brought out. There's a book written, A Dangerous Calling, and this guy is, is this guy taught for years in that system, and he talks about some of these problems. And, and this is one of the problems, is that they're training pastors not to be pastors, but to be scholars. And that's not what a pastor is. A no, pastor is no, not a scholar. No. Scholar, the, the Scholars are excellent for what they are. They're ex subject matter experts in specific things. So you have subject matter experts in, you know, some of the New Testament stuff or Pauline literature or Petrine literature or whatever, right? You have very guys who are experts in those things. That doesn't make them pastors. No. That doesn't make them preachers. That doesn't make them necessarily teachers of the whole thing. They're just experts in that. And we should listen to what they have to say because they're experts. But they're training men. Everything produces after its own kind, right? Yep. That's, got, that's the principle we find in Scripture. Scholars and experts train up scholars and experts. It takes shepherds and elders to train up shepherds and elders. Yeah. It takes ministers to train ministers, preachers to train preachers, deacons to train deacons. That's why here I've made it such a big deal to say, look, we need to grab these shepherds and then these new, these shepherds, this shepherd, uh, this eldership needs to start training up the next generation of elders. Mm -hmm. I can help with that, but I can't do that. I'm not a shepherd. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's real easy, guys. You can go in and look at, you can look at this stuff for yourself. This stuff isn't under a rock somewhere. It's really obvious. It's out in plain view. You just have to know how to look for it. You just have to know, I think, know where I to I think go. the problem is, is, is uh, uh, most people just don't care. You know, most churches around are teaching people things that make them feel better. Sure. About themselves. Yeah. And not confronting the sin in their life. Mm. You know, let's look at some of this. Yeah, because so we're dealing with some we're dealing sin. with the sin in somebody. Right. Now, again, what is God doing in it? He's bringing us to Jesus. Yeah, that's absolutely. where He's going. He's absolutely. trying to set things absolutely. up for Christ. But this is how He does it. Verse thirteen in Deuteronomy chapter two, and the Lord said, "Now get up and cross the Zered Valley." So we cross the valley. Thirty. Now He's years talking passed. about this. They're they're already there. He's yeah. talking about what happened the previous generation for the, this previous generation. That's yeah. what He's talking about. So if you missed any of that, I mean, they're already at the promised land. That's right. And Deuteronomy is just a retelling. Yeah, it's a retelling. It's of the law. And a summary at that. And a summary at that, yeah. But he's telling everything that happened, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, he kind of, he's kind of summarizing. It, summarizing. Yeah. You know, that's what this is about. Okay. And so in that summary, we're going to see some more details as yeah. well. Yeah, there'll right? be some details. So yeah. we're going to see some details we didn't as have well before. that we didn't have before, but mm -hmm. we're also, he's also going to breeze over some stuff that's already been said in yeah. Numbers, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. 38 years passed from the entire time we left Kadesh Barnea. By the way, Kadesh Barnea is a real place. Mm -hmm. It's on a map. You can pull up Google Earth, type in Kadesh Barnea, and it'll take you right there on Google Earth yeah. where it's at. Mm -hmm. that, that city's still there today. Until we crossed the Zared Valley. By then, that entire generation of fighting men had perished from the camp as the Lord had sworn to them. 
The Lord's hand was against them until he completely eliminated from the camp. There are consequences to our actions. Now, that's a that's a real uh, kind of peanut butter and jelly kind of Well, how long was Numbers? Huh? How long was Numbers? It took us a while. Yeah. How, was this is a long book, wasn't it? Yeah. 36 chapters? 36 37? chapters. Yeah. So from, we're talking about from Numbers chapter 11, mm-hmm. right? Because that's the first that's the first rebellion we see on this side of Mount Sinai, yep. right? So they just leave the camp and they immediately rebel, Numbers 11. So from Numbers 11 to 36, we're reading about nothing but rebellion that he just summed up in For a sentence. For 38 years. Yeah. 38 years. Yeah. You know, and this here, this he kind of he kind of candy-coated this. It's like an M&M, okay? But what happened, he said, he said, and uh, he said, and they, uh, the fighting man had perished from the camp as the Lord had sworn to them. Yeah. God killed them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it didn't perish. God killed them, guys. Right. 603,500. Go in the book of Deuteronomy. I mean, numbers, you'll find it. 603,500 fighting men over the age of 20 died because they would not do what he told them to do. That's right. You think that God is going to give you a pass today when you made the decision, I don't care what God says. I don't care to know what God says. I only want to listen to this guy make me feel better Instead of going to the book or going to a church that says, I'm going to tell you what you ain't going to want to hear. I'm going to tell you how you don't want to hear it. And then it's going to be up to you what you do with it or not. Well, you think he's going to give you a pass? Is that what we think? People in the world think God's going to give them a pass. Judgment is going to be awful. Mm-hmm. It's going to be ugly. No, for sure. Go, go look at 2, Timothy, I mean, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. It says he's going to come back in blazing fire with his powerful angels and take vengeance on those that do not know God and those that have not obeyed the gospel. That's what he says. Mm-hmm. You know, you know I, I think your idea and God's idea of vengeance is probably different. Mm. Because we can look in the Old Testament and see what God's idea of vengeance is. Yeah. It was pretty dramatic. Yeah. It was ugly. It is. It was vicious and it was violent. I mean, we and know, knowing this, we warn people. Because we know yes. that Jesus initially why? came to why redeem. Do we, why do we warn them? Because, because we love them, man. Yeah, it's horrible. If we don't care about you, hey, you're on your own. Fine. Yeah. Do what you want. That's why we tell people that are in sexual sins, we love them. Man, I don't want them dead. I don't want them to die and perish. So we tell them what they're doing is wrong. That's right. What they're doing is wrong. It's it's ungodly and it's unbiblical. That's right. No matter what you think it means. So you can say, well, I believe. I don't care what you believe. I really don't care what you believe. Well, and you don't really believe if you don't obey. But if you if you say, well, I, I, I believe God. Well, it doesn't matter what you believe. The only thing that matters is what did God say and what am I going to do with what he said? And here he said, these people perished. They were, they were eliminated. It's it. It's yep. it. They perished in the camp as the Lord had sworn to them. The Lord's hand was against them until he had completely eliminated them. That's a nice word. Yeah. Killed. That's what the, killed. God eliminated them from, from the camp. He eliminated them from life. It's it's anti alive. I think is what what some well, people call it. That's the that's the proper word. That I made him an- because what happens when you when you choose rebellion? Mm-hmm. What are you what are you really saying when you choose rebellion? And whom are whom are you rebelling against? And people don't understand this. This, this may seem repetitive, but it is repetitive because yeah. God told him over and over and over. Yeah. Because they rebelled all the time. It's the same thing we do. Go ahead. Yeah. Like you can't. It's we want our cake and, and eat it too, right? We want our cake and we want to eat it too. And that's not the way this works because God is the author of life. He's the author of order. He's the author of, jo- of joy, of love, of peace. He's the author of all those things. Without him, this is Genesis 1. Without him, it's chaos and destruction and unlife. I love that you said that. It's anti-life. It really is. So when you rebel against the God of order, the God of life, the God of peace, the God of joy, the God of the God of everything good, when you rebel against him, why do you think that you can have what he gives without yielding to and if you look if you ask a person if you sit across a a table like this and say tell me what you think rebellion is Mm. you're gonna get all kinds of ideas yeah none of them are gonna say well i decided not to give god what god is owed my time my talent my money my family my job myself myself I'm not, I've decided that's rebellion. Any one of the six or seven of them you list, that's rebellion. Yeah. You think, you know, do we think that God's not capable of giving me a new job? Mm. God's not capable of, of replenishing my bank account? Mm. 
Mm. Not re- to give me dip. You know, if there's friends in your life that you say, I probably should not have had these friends because they're they're leading me away from God, then eliminate them. Yeah. God can give you new friends. I promise you he can give you new friends. There's a whole bunch of them down here who want to be friends with. That's right. A whole bunch That's of them. That's true. You know? Very true. So, so, you know, I mean, it just it, it just sticks in me when, when I hear all these places, you know, there's churches in town that have 1,200, 1,300, 1,500 members, and they're, and they're, teach, they're teaching them candy coating. They're teaching them m M&M stuff. Yeah. When are you going to teach them the book? I mean, you, we sat in a room with one of them. Yeah, I can't teach what you don't know. I understand that. We do know it. And here, we're teaching it. But... You know, it's it's one of those things where you know people are going to go where they where they to get their ears itched. That's that's, that's just, what it also it's, says. It's, Paul tells Timothy. Yeah, it's it's just the nature of it, and it's been that way since the first century. Since the first century, this is what people do, because it's never it's never been an evidentiary problem. Like that's what to me that's what Numbers and Deuteronomy demonstrate so well. It's that God has this people, and that's that's one of the reasons their punishment is so severe. Mm-hmm. He, God has these people that know that know what He's about, that He's trying to save them, that He's trying to give them good things, and they just don't care because He's not doing it the way they want him to do it right he's not doing it on their timetable he's not doing it the way they want he's not doing it he's not doing it beholden to them Mm -hmm. and so instead of them just trusting him and saying i you know what god you're great at this i just need to shut up and 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 follow along right and try to glean right instead of going that route with it they go oh you're a horrible person who wants to kill us and destroy us and and do all these things when he's that's obviously not the Mm -hmm. case and so it's always been this way with the human heart, where we look at what God says and the things we go, yeah, I don't want that. I don't want that. And if that if that's where you're at, there are all sorts of places in town, and not just here, but everywhere. There are all sorts of places <coughs> that, you know, when you feel those cords of guilt, when you feel the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. hurting you, tugging on you, cutting on you, there are all sorts of places in town that'll shut him up and make you feel right as rain. Yeah. And it's a horrible thing. And and we're told in Second Peter, we're told in Jude, where Paul tells us that the judgment for those false teachers is not idle. And so look, we don't we that's why we teach out of the book. Because we want you to know what the book actually says. Not what we want it to say. It's why the book is up on the screen and Lee does such a great job of following along with where we go. Because we want you to see it. We want your eyeballs on the word of God. Yeah. Because guess what? back in the 1400s back in the 1300s when people actually got their eyeballs on the word of god everything changes everything changed yeah everything changes it did. right it did. and that's that's the way it's always been mm. that's the way it's always been this is why this is why this is why you have a lot of lot of churches that will not teach the book that will do not want oh they'll they'll pay lip service to it they want you to have one they'll tell you to read it every day but they're not teaching out of it or they'll drop a verse and run away from it well, we're going to talk about this verse today, kind of. We're going to drop this verse, and then I'm going to talk about pop psychology and about politics and about all these lesser things, right? Mm-hmm. If you're in a if you're in a church that does that, if you've got a pastor who does that, get out, run away. Don't walk. Run away. Don't walk. Don't walk. Run. Okay. All right. Now, when the last of these fighting men, this is verse 16. Uh, had died the lord said to me today you are to pass by the region of moab are when you come to the amorites do not harass them or provoke them to war for i will not give you possession of any land belonging to the amorite ammonites i've given it as a possession to the descendants of lot so god has given a possession to the moabites who are descendants of lot ammonites who are descendants of lot he's given possession of land to esau's descendants so god hates all these people but the jews no. wrong we've already talked wrong. about this a couple yeah. times no god god is doing things out there that you and i don't have a clue about no and the bible is a sliver it's a sliver yeah. it's a very important sliver yeah but it's a sliver yeah. of what god has done yeah don't tell me that god isn't working on the chinese don't tell me in fact you know i, I love it when people say that because then i get to well there are you know it's best estimates there are more christians in china than there are in the united states yeah. so you know let that sink in for a second but don't tell me that god doesn't care about the north korean you don't know what he is doing that's right you don't know that's right there it's likely, very likely, that the church is stronger in North Korea than it is in the United States. Don't say amen. Say, oh, no. Yeah. I can tell you right now that in many places, it's stronger in Mexico. 
Oh, man. Than it is, oh, it is, man. Than it is even in his town. Why? Because their lives are on the line. Yeah. And, you know, the enemy doesn't persecute the church into non-existence. He persecutes the church into holy commandos, into warriors ready to lay down their lives. Yeah. Lay down their lives for Christ. Yeah. Meanwhile, we've got, pe- we've got people that won't even quit their job. Yeah. They won't even get rid of a friend. Yeah. For Christ. They won't give more than a pittance of their money to Christ. And, it's, it's, and when it comes to laying down their life. Yeah. You know, God knows th- this place ain't ready for that. But this is but this is what Babylon looks like. I know. This is what Babylon know. looks like, man. And this one day judgment's like coming. Rome. One day judgment's coming. It's very true. You know, I mean, I mean, true. I mean, judgment came in these people's lives. We had to live like this. You know, we we would be we we wouldn't make it. Mm. Well, m- most most supposed Christians they don't know no they don't know enough book to give up their life for it. It's they hard. Just don't. It's hard. And this is why we implore you guys. We, we, we see these issues and we implore you, implore you, implore you, implore you. Get somewhere where they're teaching the book. Yeah. We're not the only place doing it. No. There's lots of places out there, but you got to find one. You've got to be discerning. Don't go where you feel good. Okay. You want to, of course, it's okay to feel good. Yeah. But go where they're teaching the book. Mm-hmm. Feeling good is not the end all be all. Go somewhere where the traditions of the apostles, where the teachings of Christ are taught. Yeah. For the good, for goodness sake. Where you're not afraid to call sin, sin. You know, hey, place where real it, simple, guys. If they got a pride flag hanging outside the building, that probably ain't not it. a good idea. To go. Probably not a good idea. That stuff is deceptive. It's going to destroy you. Get away from it. Okay. So, hey, I appreciate it. You know, I, I'm really glad that there are a bunch of congregations out there. There are a bunch of churches out there today that feel super comfortable self-identifying as false teachers because they've got a rainbow flag out front. Great. Now I know. That's wrong. Let's go somewhere they're not doing that. Yeah. Right? Real easy. I I I'm I am tickled. And I've I've said this before, man. I pers- personally I wish that racists would just come out and be comfortable saying they're racists. Yeah. You know, I wish they would. I wish they'd hang a sign out front that says, "Hey, we hate white people, or we hate black people, or we hate these people." I wish they'd do that. You know why? I wouldn't shop there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah. I don't want anything to do with that. Thanks, Thanks for, for letting let, me know. I'm going to I'm going to yeah. go where, you know, I I don't have to deal with stupidity and fools. Yeah. So when they hang a pride flag out front of their churches, they're telling you they don't care about the book. They don't care about what God says. They're in the business of indulgement. And you want to run away from them. And guys, it's not new. It's been around since the first century. I think I think that to for people to really realize that God's working all over this world. You know, and I've heard preachers say, Well, America is God's favorite people. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. He is I think that for in many instances he's completely disgusted with this country. With, with what our, we've done. Well, I mean there, I don't, I don't know any, uh, and I'm thinking about the scriptures, right? So every time God describes a country or a nation, um, his view of them are they are products of chaos and evil, right? I mean, I'm specifically think about Daniel and the nations that where yeah. do they come from, right? They come out of the chaotic waters, right? And this is a symbol for evil, chaos, and, and yeah. destruction, all mm-hmm. these things. Mm-hmm. They are spawned, excuse me, they are spawned, and what are they? You know, they're horrific looking beasts that have to be that have to be tamed, that have to be destroyed or judged or handled by God to accomplish what? The rock. Yeah. Right? The only nation before God that is holy is his people, the church. We are a distinct people. Our citizenship is now in heaven. Mm-hmm. Right? We are his people. That's it. We are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. Right? Well, we have to choose coal. To drink from that rock. We do. We absolutely have to do. And if we're not willing to do that, we're going to make the same mistakes these guys. Go really look at 1 Corinthians 10. That's right. Yeah, they made all these mistakes. I'm going to preach that. It's going to be co- awesome, man. You know, they, they, they had Jesus with them. That's right. Not in the way we understand Jesus, but it says, and they drank from the spiritual rock, which was Jesus himself. They had, when Moses brought water from the rock, was bringing it like in a in a in a real sense. Well, we have figuratively we drink from the spiritual rock of Jesus. They were drinking from a rock where water was gushing out of a rock to why, feed them. And why do we need to do that? Because it's the only thing the only thing to satisfy the the it'll only thing that satisfy the thirst. You know who's super inclusive? Satan. Oh <laughs> yeah. 
He's super inclusive. Yeah. He's so he's so inclusive. Wide are the avenues that lead to destruction. Narrow is the way that leads to life and few find it. Yeah. You got to drink from the rock because there is now no other name under heaven in which men can be saved. Yeah. That God that God has overlooked the times of ignorance. By the way, that's these times where the nations are all scattered out. And you can go look at Romans chapter 1 what he says about the sexual perversion of man. You can go look right. at you yep. can go look at other places where he talks about the about the physical perversion of man or where right. he talks about people you know being consumed with wealth. There's all you can go to 1 Timothy chapter 4 I believe where he says there's going to come a time when people are going to heap around them teachers that will tickle their ears and tell them what they want to hear. Yep. Well, you know, Jesus said all that. Yep. You know, See, Paul Paul writes I think in 1 Corinthians uh, I think 14, I believe. He says, I want you to know, I want you to understand that everything I write are the commandments of the Lord. Mm. All right? That means everything. The, it says the prophets wrote and they and they longed to understand because the thing, they, they weren't writing it. It was God breathed. God was breathing into them, inspiring them to write. Jesus, Jesus was writing all this stuff. He's the word. And he says in John chapter 12, the words I spoke will judge you in the last days. Wow. You know, he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna map us out to make us look and see what rebellion looked like, and then he's gonna stand us up and say, "How'd you do with that?" Yeah. So it's so your choice. You know whether we, we read this stuff and you say six hundred three thousand people died. Hmm. Why? And what am I gonna learn from it? What I learned from it? God's got a plan. And and he's working that plan in China and North North Korea and w- Russia wherever, just like he was working that plan apart from the nation of Israel. You know the Ammonites. He said you're gonna pass by. Leave him alone. Leave, leave him alone. You know the leave him alone. I I blessed him with that land. Give him that land. You know leave him alone. I'm working here. Go do do what you're told. Quit doing trying to do what everybody else is told. Yeah. You know and if we learn that, then we'll be okay. But I, I'm sadly, I don't think we're going to learn it. I think we got too many people out there teaching too much nonsense that people can't learn it because they're not willing to learn it. How'd you learn? You learn by on your own. You went to the book. I learned on my own. Somebody asked me the other day. We said, "How did you? How did?" So I was talking to somebody and they said, "How did you? How did you get learned?" I said, "I got in the book and I and I nose dived into the book." Well, and you know, you say we learned alone. We made that decision. Yeah. That, you know, like what Jesus says, right? You have to hate your own life. Mm -hmm. I walked away from EMS. I love EMS, man. Mm -hmm. I I really do. And I've tried to get back on the ambulance since Mm -hmm. I finished this. Mm -hmm. And God keeps closing those doors on me. Yeah. Well, and let me do it. You know, I recently reached out to the state guard, Mm -hmm. you know, wanting information about, I thought, well, maybe I'll do some volunteer work, you know, here in Texas and I'll get to do EMS. Man, they, they, nobody will call me back, man. Nobody, nobody. I mean, you put in your information, you think you're going to get, you know, somebody, that's what they do. Yeah. Nope. I can't, I can't, I've watched over and over and over again, God closed those doors in my life. Yeah. And, um, but ultimately we made that decision that God comes first, number one. Mm-hmm. But then when we made that, he promises us, if you seek, you shall find. If you yeah. knock, the door shall be open. Wisdom calls in the street. It isn't yeah. hidden under a rock. Yeah. There are men and women dedicated, and it's not that expensive, but dedicated to getting you an awesome yeah. foundation in the Word hey, of God. We'll teach you for free. We'll teach you for free. <laughs> it won't there, cost you a dime. There are, there are schools out there that do not cost much, and they give an excellent, 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 Hey, we've got we've got guys that came to us, studied with us, they were converted, and we're sending them to school now. That's right. Yeah. So, all right, it's there if you want it. Hey, hey guys, but you got to want it. I, I think we got maybe got chasing some rabbits here today, but but the main point is Jesus is the plan. God's working everywhere, not just in your life, but He wants to work in your life, and you've got to decide. I'm not going to rebel against that. Amen. I'm going to I'm going to follow Him. I'm going to do what He tells me, and I'm going to I'm going to put start putting a foot in front of the other, going towards Him instead of away from Him. That's right. I've been running too long, the wrong way. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for the opportunity we have to have a, a pathway to you. We know that was through Jesus. We know that, and Father, we we know that that many have have come up with the courage that you've given them to follow him. I pray, Father, that you help the folks that are listening to this and will listen to this whenever, that, uh, that you give them the courage, Father, to quit rebelling, to rebelling against you and start following your son. Help us to do that, Father, and thank you for the opportunities. Bless us as we as we go forward. Help, us, help Cole and I and guys like us to never be afraid to teach the book and never be afraid to say what it says when, it's, when we're supposed to say it. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.